Today, I'm going to talk about Huawei's view of what's going on with IPv6 uh, globally, and especially here in Europe. And because there are many experts here, uh, I really would like you guys to track our view and tell us whether, you know, uh, what we perceive match reality or not. And also, we have a number of uh, questions that I hope to get some answers from the expert here. Uh, this way, we can uh, propagate the expertise of UK IPv6 Council uh, to other parts of Europe and even uh, the whole world. So the first one is I give a quick uh, status and then mainly we are going to talk about the momentum and challenges. So I think that at the beginning, uh, Veronica showed the famous Google picture about uh, IPv6, you know, user connection and traffic reaching about uh, 30 to 35% uh, nowadays. But some people wonder, you know, who are doing IPv6, especially the operators. So we pull this data from APNIC, which uh, the yellow bar is West Europe and the blue bar is uh, rest of Europe. So from this picture, you can see that in West Europe, about two to five operators every year is deploying uh, IPv6. And in rest of Europe, uh, there are you know, more countries, some countries are quite small, but anyhow, if we uh, consider the top 10 uh, AS numbers, uh, we can see that about 10 to 15 every year is deploying uh, IPv6. So it seems that the, the pace is very steady uh, and over the years, it's not accelerating, but it's not slowing either. We don't know why. And if you have an opinion on this, I think that uh, please shoot me an email. I would love to hear that. And also, uh, when we look at the number of preferred users for some operators, some already reaching you know, a very high percentage of uh, IPv6 preferred users, uh, for example, uh, Sky UK here is one of the top uh, operators here. And if we look at uh, Europe, the IPv6 adoption is highly uh, uneven. I guess you know of this, uh, especially Spain and Italy. And the reason I brought this up is because when we deploy IPv6, I would assume that it's more useful if everybody else also uh, deploy IPv6. Otherwise, my own IPv6 network is kind of like an island. Uh, so, you know, when other people are not uh, deploying IPv6, I guess, you know, we need to help them. And I think that this is kind of like the, the mission of the IPv6 councils. So I think that that's the quick one. Um, if we look at the momentum, uh, first, I think that people care most is about the value chain. Because if the value chain is not complete, if you are doing your own IPv6 and other people you know, uh, don't do it, then maybe it's less useful. So here we kind of like list the time when major IPv6 events happen, including when the operating systems you know, uh, introduce uh, IPv6 and also when the content uh, support IPv6. So in a short summary is that the big content like Google, you know, uh, Netflix, this, you know, they are largely IPv6 ready by uh, 2013. And the devices, uh, the operating system are ready earlier, but the apps are not ready uh, until 2017 when Apple kind of like mandate that all apps must support IPv6. And we check very hard, so far we still cannot find whether Google uh, or Android uh, mandate IPv6 support for all the apps or not. We believe that it's not because we can find at least one app that does not support IPv6. But if you have information whether Android mandate uh, the apps to be IPv6 compatible or not, please also let us know. So overall, uh, at the moment, we believe that 
about 80% of the uh, devices uh, support IPv6. I think that you know all the major phones all support IPv6, but the smart TV may not support IPv6 and some uh, fixed uh, CPE, the residential gateway, may not support IPv6 either. And in terms of network, about 30% uh, to, to 40% support IPv6 because we can pull all this uh, data from APNIC. Uh, so I think that the network part, I think that uh, these are relatively accurate data. Um, on the content side, if we measure the content of the major, uh, I mean, the, the, the share of traffic for Google, Facebook, Netflix, I think that we have such data, at least 50% of the big content uh, support uh, IPv6. So I think that this is the, the value chain looks uh, pretty good. And then regarding the IP address exhaustion, I think that you all know that. So let me not repeating it. I think that the piece of information that may be interesting is that in this year, the price per IPv4 address actually doubled. You know, at the beginning, it's about like, you know, 20 to 25, but now it's already slightly more than $50. So we believe that you know the rapid increase of uh, IPv4 address is also going to uh, provide a new momentum for people to do uh, IPv6. And the third momentum is regarding the government policy. And here I want to single out France, uh, USA, and China because I think that they all have something uh, quite interesting. Uh, for France, the interesting thing is that in about 2018, they actually mandate that uh, 5G license holder uh, must make their mobile network IPv6 compatible by end of 2020. So this is done by ASEP, the, the uh, French regulator. And personally, I think that this is a brilliant uh, policy because if there are more countries uh, having this kind of, you know, call it recommendation or requirement, we will surely see a lot more uh, IPv6 uh, deployment in the world. Um, the USA, I think that the interesting thing is that they are talking about IPv6 only now, uh, unlike some other country which has not even introduced IPv6, uh, US is already talking about IPv6 only. And they also have some uh, KPIs, they set some KPIs for the federal uh, networks um, China also have some uh, KPIs, also have some KPIs. For example, they said, you know, 50% traffic uh, for mobile network in 2023 and 15% for fixed network. And you may wonder why, you know, the mobile network and fixed network, you know, there's such a big difference. I think that the short answer is that currently, I think that uh, mobile network is already at 20% in 2021 this year. And fixed network is only at 5%. So I think that, you know, uh, they require that, you know, in two years, uh, the IPv6 in mobile network is going to grow, you know, 250%, but the fixed network needs to grow 300%, but, you know, 300% on 5% is only 15%. Uh, so overall, I think that, you know, this country all set some, you know, KPI, which, uh, is, is, is kind of a book, big, you know, uh, push for IPv6. And when we meet with DG Connect in September, DG Connect also stated that they are doing some IPv6 uh, study. They will publish it in Q1 next year, and they expect that IPv6 will accelerate. So we'll see, maybe they will come up with some incentive or, or uh, even uh, policy. So on the policy side, I think that it's also uh, fairly encouraging. Um, we have this perception that maybe 5G and IoT are adding momentum. I think that, you know, uh, some people easily believe this, but some people will argue uh, against it, especially for IoT. You know, some people always say, that, oh, you know, there's going to be billions and billions of, you know, IoT device and all of them need an IP address and therefore only IPv6 uh, can you know, meet that requirement. 
But on the other hand, many IoT devices are not even use an IP address. For example, they may be uh, remain at layer two. Um, you know, the gateway will hide all the all you know uh, all the you know IoT devices. So is IoT really you know a big push for for IPv6? Uh, we have some statistics that you know the three PLC the power line communication about 50 million devices support IPv6 and you know uh, this Y Sun also you know uh, have about 91 million uh, according to the association. Uh, but does this really match reality? Um, if you have information, we really like to uh, hear from you um, regarding 5G. Just now we mentioned RCEP. Um, we know at least one operator in Germany, you know, take the 5G deployment opportunity to introduce uh, IPv6. But again, you know, if you have data to prove or disprove this, we would like to hear from you. Um, overall, we believe that deploying IPv6 at the overlay, meaning the service layer, uh, is well justifiable. And um, when we say overlay, this is, you know, uh, compared to underlay, which is the transport network. So overall, we believe that IPv6 is in overlay is well justifiable. You know, the traffic is growing. And at the first slide, we show that, you know, between two to five operators here in West Europe are deploying IPv6 every year. Um, when we try to convince some operator to deploy IPv6, or even, for example, inside Huawei, there are always people who ask this question, oh, you know, these operator have plenty of IPv4 address. Why should they deploy uh, IPv6? So we really would like to uh, know why, you know, for people who deploy IPv6, uh, why did you uh, decide to do so? Especially, for example, BT or, for example, uh, Deutsche Telekom, you know, Orange. These big operator actually have, you know, sufficient or plenty of IPv4 address, but they also deployed IPv6. Why? Um, from our interview, we believe that uh, company deployed IPv6 for one of these three reasons. One reason may be they, they want IPv6 they need IP address today. For example, you know, Sky Italia, you know, free. These are mostly the competitive operators. And then the incumbent operator, many of them deploy IPv6, uh, maybe because they want future proof, uh, just to make sure that, you know, in the future, if there's a new application that require a lot of IP ad address, they will be ready. And there are also some uh, operators that do IPv6 to meet uh, government uh, guidance. So these are um, overall regarding the TCO, it appears that if you time your IPv6 introduction with your equipment upgrade cycle, uh, at the time when you are going to upgrade your device, anyway, I think that it may be a good idea to introduce IPv6 this way. You know, you, 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 you get IPv6 from the vendors almost for free. I think that this is a little bit of simplified view, but I think that you get the idea. And you can even save some uh, money on net or selling your IPv4 address. We know of at least one operator in Europe, a big one. Uh, they talk about, oh, maybe we do more IPv6. And then, you know, while well, IPv4 is still valuable, let's sell that. Because, you know, when all people do IPv6, then maybe IPv4 will not be, you know, will maybe worth this, you know, 10 years from now. So I think that there are some people talking about, about that. And then there's the OPEX, but, you know, overall, because IPv6 is growing faster than IPv4 in almost every aspect, no matter from the number of users, from traffic, from number of connections. Uh, so, you know, this means that the TCO must be justifiable. Otherwise, you know, there wouldn't be so many people uh, doing it. So this is the overlay part. Um, I want to, again, you know, distinguish the overlay with the underlay. And currently, many of the challenges we see is at the underlay, is the, the transport network. So uh, this slide, this slide kind of like summarize our view of uh, the challenges 
why some operators do not want to deploy IPv6. We really believe that the, the, the biggest uh, uh, issue is the willingness. Because IPv6 is something new, then it inevitably it, it uh, brings some uncertainty. And some people feel that with that, I can almost, you know, I can always delay and delay and delay. So they are not willing to, you know, try something new. I think that this may be the biggest reason. And knowledge is really a big part of the things. For example, uh, some people, many operators are not fully aware of the latest uh, progress in IPv6 standard the product and solutions. They still feel that all oh, IPv6 have many problems and therefore, you know, they, they, they don't want to do it. But this is to some extent, we believe that it's a little bit of a misconception. Uh, and there's also the ecosystem, some CPEs, smart TV don't support IPv6. And some, you know, many small enterprise websites don't support IPv6. So uh, there's a little bit of uh, issue there, but there's also the some technical issue, you know, uh, not, not as many as many people believe. But there are some, especially on the CPE part, and maybe IPv6 product is not as well proof as, as IPv4. These are true. So uh, the technical part is what I'm trying to get some uh, feedback because there are many uh, IPv6 group here who have already deployed IPv6 network. So regarding, you know, when we talk to many operators and we ask them what, from their per perspective, what are the IPv6 challenges? And here I collect the, the major ones that, you know, uh, multiple operator have raised. And I think that the many operator talk about MTU issues because for example, in Greece, uh, uh, OTE talk about, you know, MTU can really affect the user experience. I think that here, uh, Richard also told me that, you know, uh, MTU can be a tricky issue. Um, so this MTU, but regarding the MTU, it appeared to us, and this is kind of like me from a vendor's perspective, some feedback to the, to the community. But we'll see, you know, you may agree or you may disagree. We would love to hear your, your view. Our, our belief is that, this problem, the MTU problem, is already well recognized by maybe Cisco, by Huawei, and there are solutions. So many of the, the issues, for example, OTE talk about, you know, how uh, MTU affected the, the, the user experience. But actually, you know, uh, the vendor already have a solution uh, to it. And as long as the, the source, IPv6 source, can fragment the packet. It seems that you know the the many of the problem can be solved. But again, this is maybe you know overly simplified view from the vendor. Maybe it doesn't match reality. So we'd love to hear your view. Many many operators really say that the network management system uh, is a major headache if you want if they want to migrate the transport network. So the underlay, not just the overlay uh, to, to uh, IPv6, because you know you need to collect IPv6 traffic statistics. Uh, you need to do accounting, you know, many of these things in IPv6. And it's difficult to change the management uh, system. And again, you know, do you see progress? We'd love to hear from you. And um, regarding the address management. IPv6 has a number of difference from IPv4 address. Other than, you know, the address is, is much longer. There are also many different kinds of uh, address, like, you know, GUA, ULA, that temporary address, etc. So, for example, some operators say that, oh, you know, IPv6, the address is so long. And in the past, for example, 192.168, I can still remember. And now this IPv6 is like uh, 2A3B, etc. You know, he said that, you know, when I look at the IPv6 address, I don't want to deploy. Um, 
because it's very, very easy. They feel that it's very, very easy to, you know, make a mistake when configuring the IP address. So again, you know, uh, we are curious. The IPv6 finally kills CLI, meaning that you can no longer, you know, config uh, using command line because the IPv6 address is so long and so difficult to, to remember and config. So this one thing, and then there's this uh, IP, each interfaces has many, many uh, uh, IPv6 address, especially I think that Google keep insisting that, you know, you need to have at least N address for each interface. Otherwise, you know, they will not, they will not support the XCP like that. So uh, these are the issues, and um, um, we already get some feedback from, from uh, the expert here that using, for example, ULA for loopback is not a good idea because uh, you may use the, the UL, the loopback address maybe in the ICMPv6 packet too big, et cetera. So, you know, it's also better to use a GUA for, for loopback. So these kind of things, and there are also some other issues, but I think that maybe this like uh, multi homing, multi prefix, all of these and um, the source destination address selection, maybe they are more challenges for vendors and for operators. Maybe you don't need to care about this. So again, you know, these some of the, the challenges that we, we hear from many other operators, we would love to, you know, uh, hear from you uh, whether there's any progress here. And then many operators also have this big concern about IPv6 security. For example, at least one operator told us that, oh, you know, you can, you can make up a list of uh, extension headers um, because the extension header, the router needed to process these pre uh, extension headers. And therefore, you know, you can make up a list of extension headers and make the router so busy processing these extension headers that it will crash uh, the, the routers. And these, again, you know, this concern about IPv6 security also prevent some operator from deploying it. And here we would like to uh, say that uh, IETF uh, recently published uh, uh, RFC uh, 1999, uh, just now, I think Eric Binky is also uh, here. He's the author of this RFC. And he documented, you know, most of the known issues and solutions. So at least I want to let uh, people who are concerned about IPv6 security that, you know, at least, you know, IETF and the vendors are well uh, aware of these issues and they are taking uh, measures to solve these uh, issues. So, Mm, maybe part of the, your concern is actually more about a, a, a perception issue than a reality issues. So these are some of the, the update on the security side. And then there are people concerned about, you know, incompatible uh, vendor roadmap, meaning that, you know, we see one UK operator when they try to deploy IPv6 in their underlay network, but when they see that the roadmap from, uh, you know, from the major vendors are quite different, they feel that, oh, you know, IPv6 must be, you know, not mature. Otherwise, you know, the vendors won't be so different. So I think that this is indeed a, a, a issue that, you know, uh, we vendors need to, to uh, solve. I think that's the legacy equipment. There's these like 20 million IP engineers don't understand IPv6, which is, is uh, kind of, is kind of true. So I think that this is why the UK IPv6 Council and other IPv6 Council are so uh, useful. And here, bring me to my last slide. Uh, I would like to uh, ask for some opinion is that we, we firmly believe that IPv6 service uh, makes sense. Uh, so at the overlay, but will this IPv6 service or traffic eventually lead to IPv6 network, the underlay, because again, we, we see more operator believe in IPv6 overlay, but uh, underlay, you know, there are fewer operator uh, believing it. And here, I, we have this question that, you know, eventually, you know, as more and more traffic, as more and more traffic become IPv6, and let's take it to the extreme, like one day, 
IPv6 traffic reach 100 percent. All traffic are, are IPv6 at that time. Will we still, you know, maintain a IPv4 network using 6PE or 6VPE, meaning using MPLS to carry the IPv6 uh, traffic? My personal opinion is that, you know, as we have more and more IPv6 traffic, uh, maybe the network will also migrate to, to IPv6. But some people don't believe, they, they, they kind of believe that First, they, they believe that, you know, it will be very, very slow, which I completely agree. Uh, but, you know, well, eventually it will, the traffic, the IPv6 traffic will take us to IPv6 network or not. You know, we are curious about this uh, question. So I think that that's uh, it for my presentation and any questions or comments.